You unmuted me. Thanks. <laughs> um, so before I tell you the next one, uh, I got to tell you a, a really quick story. And uh, so sometimes in the evening uh, when I get back to the shop and, and I'm in my service truck, um, you know, I got a little paperwork from the day, you know, make sure all my stories and my, my narratives are all squared away. Make sure any any warranty pictures or anything like that, I've got them all pictured up and emailed, shot off and all of that. So usually I'm I'm on the Bluetooth on my phone and I'm talking to my wife. I'm letting her know, hey, I'm buttoning it up for the night. I'm just letting you know I'm at the shop. I'm safe and I'll call you when I get in the car. And um, <laughs> every time I tell her. I'm just, I got to write a couple of stories here and then I'm leaving, right? And then she goes, do you start them with once upon a time? Every single time she says that. Do you start it with once upon a time? But, um, <laughs> so anyway, the the last question that I got for us is a play off of the other one. And it's one to two words that you put in your narratives, your stories that you feel really elevate the the quality of your of your narrative of your story. So I got two words that I use very regularly. One is interface. So when I hook up to a to a truck, I don't say hooked up to the truck. I say interfaced with whatever software I used. So that is one way that I feel it really elevates the way my story reads and it looks it makes it look very technical and in nature, and I feel like it really elevates the professionalism of the story. The other uh, word that I use is adjust. Um, so if I f if I change the oil and I fill it to the manufacturer's spec, I always put adjusted to the manufacturer's spec. So okay. um, whenever I'm topping off any kind of fluids, I always put adjusted to the manufacturer's spec. So um, and a couple, one more thing is, is I never put any of my exact torque specs in my stories. It's just not needed. And I also uh, don't use any um, eyes, me's, any personal uh, words uh, in those narratives. It's, it's just did this. I did this, mm -hmm. did this, did this. I never put, I did this, or we did this. I stopped and had to do this. You know, I only put in the narrative what is what is relevant to the to the narrative. I didn't I don't put in there. Stop, took a break, had to go to the pisser. I don't put anything like that in, in my narrative. So, yeah, <laughs> you but, laugh but, now, but, buddy, but we went to the local shop and they only had one ply. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Awesome. What would you do? You, I, I'm sure that your vernacular is, gets quite creative in your stories, Russell. What would you say? What, what's one or one or three or ten words that you said would would elevate your stories that you use? I actually am a relentless cutter of words. So why use uh, ten when one will work? So. Very, very little wordage gets repeated, so I don't really know that I use anything that elevates the story. My goal is to make it as simple, clear, and concise as possible. Interesting. I like I like I both of those because customers um, customers don't always need to hear everything. Um, they don't always, always like as Marshall said, he doesn't put the specific. Uh, torque specs in those. Um, I don't know whether I, I I don't disagree, but I don't necessarily agree with that either because I think in certain circumstances, if it's relevant to put in, um, to to make you know appropriate sense. So, for example, if something is outside the normal, like uh, if I'm not mistaken, Porsche, and this is Porsche. Now we're talking about, to, but to give an example, Porsche single lug like GT3 cars um, are like 600 foot pounds or something ridiculous like that. Mm -hmm. That would be something that we would put in a story that I would that if I was working on one, I would want put in a story because unlike the majority of the cars out in the world, regular passenger cars 
anywhere from 90 to 120 foot pounds. You trucks, you go 150, 170, 180 foot pounds on bug nuts. Standard practice kind of stuff, stuff that's outside the normal, I would personally put in myself. I would say elevating elevating the writing by putting the most appropriate context in the story, not necessarily where I don't think I would necessarily use uh, have a have a word that I would use that would elevate, but I would suggest that my stories are contextual. So unlike Russell, uh, I like I like the idea of clear, concise, and simple as much as humanly possible. But I find that going back far enough, if I didn't give enough context and I was simple, someone who isn't well trained or well educated in the drive wasn't able to convey what occurred um i'm going to try and think of an example here on the fly but uh. yeah so like when i when i the times that i do put in a torque spec is like if it's a safety related item so like mm-hmm. i i will put torque lug nuts to 450 foot pounds okay cuz that's what our okay. our our heavy duty lug nut torque is so i will put torque to 450 foot pounds if i do like a a hub i'm torquing a hub bearings i will just put torqued per manufacturer's spec and torque sequence and i'll just leave it at that i i won't put the exact procedure i use to the to the t but i'll put it's per the manufacturer's uh procedure you know okay Okay. But if you were if you were to put every torque spec in there when you're building an engine, oh, yeah, yeah too much. you you'd be there all day long. You know what I mean? Now let's let's maybe rabbit hole this a little bit more. And I think Stefan's going in and out. He's just texted me and and said that his camera's uh, in and out, and he's only fifty percent uploaded. But it's not. He's not even showing. Yeah, it's forty one percent uploaded. So. If you're in and out, you're in, what, respond when you're able to respond, Stefan. But to, to go down this rabbit hole a little bit more, um, contextual information, specs when relevant, like perhaps your store has a mandate to put out all of the specs in. Perhaps that's your store. Perhaps your service manager, service leader, your GM wants to see those things. Um, that that just might be the leader. Um having them personally having them all in there is a bit too much that's a bit overwhelming uh again to mirror marshall's point i don't think it's it's relevant um but i like the idea of of safety related that's a that's a great way to be more granular with the description of why to put it in um if we were to go a step further down that how would you how would you i don't know what i'm trying to think richard what, what were you what were you saying the problem with that is, in theory, everything's safety related, right? If you forget, if you forget to, you know, yeah, yeah, the valve yeah. cover on an engine, you're going to end up spilling oil all over the place. But, uh, gee, I, I, it's been a while since I've dealt with like Ford or Nissan uh, service information. The wonderful thing about GM service information. Every page has a seven-digit document ID. So if you're looking like, I don't write down every step when I do a repair. I'll write down what my diagnosis is. And I always, you know, it's always the the three C's, you know, verify the customer concern, verify the causal of the concern, and verify the the correction of the customer concern. So um, tag words, I mean, I'm always... I always put in there, um, like for instance, if I'm doing a high pressure fuel pump on a diesel, I always put in there, remove components as outlined in SI document ID, bang, there's the number to gain access to whatever drain I put in there. If I've dra- I put in, if I've recovered the AC, drain the coolant, drain the engine oil. Um, and then I always put in my notes set to manufacturer specification uh all my fluid levels right like engine oil nine and a half liters of 1540 you know set the set the uh set the coolant level where it's supposed to be with vacuum filled or whichever way i'm filling it uh and then i'll always release for road test 
after after any major repair, always release for road test and then finish my story after I double check it after it's been road tested. So, um, but yeah, I don't put, I don't use, I don't put torque specs in. Um, there's just so many, I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing heads or you're doing a high pressure fuel pump, there's so many one-time use components. Uh, I, I put in there, you know, you replace all one-time use components as, as per SI document, whatever it is that I'm working on, because like all the fuel systems now, they're all one-time, one-time use. It used to be on the, what was it on the L? I can't remember which engine it was where you could pull the fuel lines off and then clean them and then reuse your fuel lines. And now you can't, you're not you're not supposed to reuse fuel lines on any high pressure fuel system. Now that includes gas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that should be in your notes. It's just, it's a lot of documentation, but I don't document like, you know, removed, removed intake, removed, uh, engine cooling fan, removed, you know, remove, 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 remove. You're just doing a lot of copy and paste. And if mm -hmm. your dealership or, group or managers or leaders, whoever it was, wants every, if they want every torque spec in your story, all you do is become good at copying and pasting. And that's, yeah, you should be able, you should be able to write a story. And to Marshall's point on that, like he said, you know, read, reading helps you learn how to write because your comprehension mm -hmm. changes too, right? doesn't matter if you're reading, if you're reading dime store westerns but uh you know a liter is a uh it's what we we measure in maple syrup and you guys usually measure in like i don't know bald eagles so that's yeah that's what a liter is marshall <laughs> i can hear the bald eagles from here look at all the bald eagles in there it's uh... wingtip to wingtip there's five it's 0.5 bald eagles <laughs> did you just see that, Richard? Yeah, I did. Oh, you know what popped into my head though? Sure, like, yeah. I think we saw it at the same time. Oh, oh. What popped into my head is all of the leader of cola. That's exactly yeah. what I thought when you said it. When you're like, yeah, I put nine liters of oil in there. And I was like, where's my goddamn liter of cola? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. He's got them skinny little bird lips. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that answers answers Marshall's questions. I think there's okay. That's that's yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can not be smiling that much for the next one. 